So one thing Wayne LaPierre was not asked about yesterday in his appearance before the Senate Judiciary Committee is where he draws the line between weapons Americans should be able to have and those they should not, because clearly Wayne's against a ban on semi-automatic weapons. But what about automatic weapons or uh, rocket launchers? It sounds crazy, but it's not. At a two-day gun buyback event in Trenton, New Jersey this weekend, officials say they bought back more than 2,600 firearms, including some semi-automatic rifles that are banned in New Jersey. No huge surprise there. A few sawed-off shotguns. Okay, it's, it's fun guy stuff. And yes, one anti-tank shoulder-fired rocket launcher. In all, at least 25% of the guns were illegal weapons, and a whopping 95% of those weapons that were purchased were fully operational. So I'm curious, Mr. LaPierre, because I know you watch Current, by your standards, shouldn't rocket launchers be legal? And what about anthrax? Can I protect my family with weaponized anthrax and surface-to-air missiles and drones? Where, Wayne, do you draw the line? Oh, you're not going to respond. Well then, joining me now to discuss this and many other issues are three of the hosts of This Week in Blackness Radio on TWIB.FM, and I'm so glad they're back. Eljoy Williams, who hosts TWIB in the morning, Elon James White, the managing director of This Week in Blackness, and Aaron Rand Freeman, host of TWIB Radio and We Nerd Hard. I still have not been offered a radio show on This Week in Blackness. <laughs> okay, semi-automatic weapons, folks. Uh, automatic weapons, rocket launchers, tanks, anthrax, my own personal drone. Where do gun junkies draw the line? And I say gun junkies because you have your, your normal Second Amendment folks who we really respect their right to bear arms and they agree with most sensible gun control, and then you have the fetish groups. Doesn't their argument extend to having your own personal arsenal of missiles? Yes. <laughs> right? The, the answer is yes. Why didn't any of these senators ask LaPierre about this? Well, because that would have made the, their argument even stupider. So then you can't just have that just happen Can't right there on TV. That. Right, exactly. So <laughs> I want a Democrat kind of, to act like a Democrat already. Well, <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'm sorry then you haven't been paying attention to the Democrats. Um, <laughs> Basically, what you're what, what you're seeing here is that to to acknowledge the ridiculousness of this, because you can make an argument that anything is used for a weapon that I need. Like I desperately need 15 samurai swords on me at all points in time mm -hmm. because I feel uh, safer and that he way. He actually has a samurai. Okay, sword, so you don't so. have to tell on me, man. <laughs> See, this is a problem. You're infringing on my a rights. Sword bad what is back. up with the cool black guys and samurai swords? <laughs> <laughs> but but that but that's legal. And we hear the argument from our gun friends saying, "Well, why don't you make hammers illegal? Because hammers aren't designed to kill people when used as their they're manufacturers not, intend. They're, they're not." a cartridge of hammers <laughs> that you can put together and shoot at people. Yes, That's you don't need to happening. reload a hammer after 30 yeah. whacks. May, may I say something? Please, Please, I feel like we're missing something. The people that are giving back their... This means that we can get through to the gun nuts if someone with a rocket launch, someone who thought that they were to have a rocket launcher, can then be talked into giving back the rocket launcher <laughs> under his own will, means we can make huge strides against any... You're any, the most optimistic I, man I, I, just, I disagree with him completely. <laughs> uh, and here's why you're wrong. What happened was that dude was having a rough time. If he had... If, like, he was like the looking economy. around his house. He was like, man, what am I going to do? I got Didn't nothing fit. except so for this rocket launcher. So you're going to tell me it was either a rocket launcher or his car. Right. Well, <laughs> you're, but you host a nerd show. You understand guys and their toys. And, you know, it could have been action figures and said it was this. And Elon's right. If he's so hard up for cash, he needs to sell his right. beloved functional rocket launcher. Exactly. But some gun advocates make the case, of course, for hunting and protection. There's this whole other group of people who feel they're actually going to need to defend themselves from the government takeover that's inevitably going to come someday, as per Alex Jones' wet dream. <laughs> so here's the question I want to ask, and no one asked it. Um, when the day comes that the government comes to take your guns away, who exactly are you guys going to kill? Is it going to be cops, ATF agents, or U.S. soldiers? Who do you think they have in mind that they're going to be using their AR-15s against? Enemies of, of freedom. Yeah, that's my, I'm assuming that's the answer. They'll be very clearly <laughs> visible, I'm assuming. It, it's literally... Brown people. Okay, well, but, but, well, but they, anyone, well, anyone who is, is representing what they don't feel to be America, which, by the way, is what they do now anyway with, the, with the, how they vote, with how uh, legislation gets passed, it's always about if you don't Others. represent the America that yes. I believe Their in. very narrow view of what America right. is, but they're talking about tyranny. They're right. talking about the state coming to confiscate their toys and preferred method of entertainment. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Listen, I'm of the mindset, and we've, I've said this on the show before, you know, they always like to go back to the founding fathers, and they said that we did go back, muskets. Yes. You People shot and killed bears and hunted with muskets. Yes. I say you have a constitutional right to musket. That's what you, you can, can have. have. Your well-regulated militia has the right to all the muskets you can stockpile. All the muskets but you people, can have. People like Wayne LaPierre are so far from the voice of, of gun owners. In fact, according to a new poll, significantly more people in Texas 
favor a ban on assault weapons than those who don't. Texas, will these politicians eventually have to sign with the will of their constituents, or is gun lobby, gun lobby money just too huge? I believe you've answered your own question. Yeah. <laughs> money, money is what's happening here right now. If you can watch people literally, literally fight against what they're, well, the people who got them elected believe and want and desire, you have it, it has to be money. There's no other answer to it. And that's the root cause. I mean, we see this not only in the gun debate, but so many uh, uh, other debate in the abortion debate in health care. There's so many people that, you know, if you talk to the constituents, this mm -hmm. is what they want. The, yes. It's clearly the polls say that. And yet there's this infusion of money of lo of lobbyists who are protecting the interests of business, who have that <laughs> that interest in, in, in but, business. But then I say the Republicans and even Harry Reid, if he lets this bill die in the Senate, uh, next time there's a massacre, y'all own it. Now, President Obama is, of course, promising new gun control legislation. But if he doesn't, it wouldn't be the first promise he's broken. It's fair enough to say. He didn't fight too hard. It was announced this week that the special envoy assigned to closing Guantanamo Bay has been reassigned and no one's replacing him. Did closing Gitmo prove too hard for the president politically, or was it really just a campaign ploy that he knew he could give up on easily if he had to? Listen, I know that we'll probably get comments in saying that you had Obama apologists on the show, but I think <laughs> but I think it's one of those instances, and we talked about this on the show earlier this week, where he had sort of this ideal naive, you know, thing that I can go in and close it, and then once he got in, and realized all of the difficulties that had to happen or the things that had to be in place in order for that to happen, it, 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 it fell apart. But did he really use the bully pulpit? He caved on that a lot easier than Bill Clinton caved on gays in the military's, you know, mm -hmm. 16 years previous. I mean, but you can also look, I mean, there's been a lot of coverage about what happened over the past four years. There's mm -hmm. been uh, various points where they pointed out where there were attempts. They were like, they, they, the, the process was started and it just, it was not going to work out. It, like, literally, it just, he couldn't do anything. Yeah. Is that fair enough to say, Aaron? I mean, with his hands tied. That's actually Elon just repeated what I was about to say. I don't. I think this is this type of congressional gridlock is unprecedented. So I don't understand how. I mean, certain things he's not going to be able to hit on. Just as simple as that. See, I kind of felt like he could have used the bully pulpit just a bit stronger on it. The will of the world is behind him. But but if you think about that, in, in all of the arguments that they were saying that he should do more on, we keep saying he should do more of right. this and use that bully pulpit. And then, so at what point is that effective? Well, also, unfortunately, I have to go to a really important question. We only have less than a minute left. But Chris Brown really? is back in the news really? after allegedly getting into a fight with Frank Ocean over a parking spot. Brown is currently on probation for assaulting his girlfriend, Rihanna, in 2009 famously and was in a fight with rapper Drake at a club last year. It's great that he's getting into fights with boys now. Um, here's the thing. He also lip syncs and uses auto-tune. We only have a few seconds left. Why are people still supporting him? Oh, come on. One of you guys, <laughs> is, one of you I, has to be willing to I take on. I don't understand. I'm not, I can, can anyone, I've never, I have been asking this, this question. Who's this Brown person? Come I, on. Even at the peak of his popularity, I was wondering what, 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 the, what the deal was, and now that he's. I mean, but this is also, you just look at hi American history, like we've seen people who are in t like incredibly problematic still maintain a following, and at some point, even following him is now a badge of how diehard you are. It's I somehow, you know. your, your character you're is stronger yeah. because you're still with the person who apparently beat his girlfriend and it wasn't really that apologetic about it. Yeah, apparently. Well, I think uh, life is long and so is karma too. We'll see what happens. But uh, I'm going to get you to talk about Chris Brown. Next time. <laughs> My panel stays with me. Al Joy, you're going to do it. My panel stays with me after the break when we look at all the excuses for gun violence, except guns. Welcome back to Viewpoint. One more quick question for the panel. I know gun control is a complex issue, but if you could wave a magic wand and change just one thing, magazine capacity, assault weapons, background checks, what would you do? Eldor. More investment in actual community programs that work. Gun buybacks, interrupter programs like Ceasefire Chicago and Operation Snug in New York. Those programs work. We need more funding for That's those. That's too intelligent. We can't accept that answer. Eli. <laughs> I was going to co-sign her intelligent answer. <laughs> Is that a problem? And Aaron? I was going to say maybe change the scale of it. We can't, I, I, I have more of an issue with um, dealing with, like, say, the amount of violence, say, in Chicago than uh, dealing with something like assault rifles. That's just going to be a long, drag-out issue That's over right. time. Until Harry Reid lets it die in the Senate. Well, <laughs> that brings me to tonight's F-bomb. So the gun junkie lobby, not the majority of sane and responsible gun owners who favor background checks. We like them. The gun junkie lobby has decided where to place the blame for gun violence in a society where it's really easy to get guns. It's the axis of scapegoat. Violent video games, violent movies, and mental illness. Let's look at the games 
First, yesterday, Senator Lamar Alexander actually said violent video games are a bigger problem than guns. Now, I'll never forget my first day in New York City when a raving maniac jumped out of an alley and threw an Atari 2600 Qbert game directly at my heart. <laughs> Fortunately, it was the 80s, and my cassette Walkman in my pocket was this big. Um, mm -hmm. But Americans spend billions on video games, and we have the highest firearm murder rate in the developed world. So it's got to be the same in other countries, right? Well, actually, other countries with the highest video game consumption, the same violent games we have here, are really quite safe. Now, studies have proven that watching violent video games can make children more aggressive. But only one country has this kind of gun violence, and it's the one with 88.8 .8 guns per 100 people. And, of course, I'm talking about uh, Tibet. Uh, not really. So it's got to be the violent movies then, right? When is Hollywood going to answer for all that make-believe violence causing all the real violence across the world? Well, Joe Scarborough, who I like, has been going off on Quentin Tarantino, calling him a jackass for releasing Django Unchained. He says movies like Django influence young men to commit acts of violence. And then Mika disagreed and Joe punched her. Um, oh, not, no, he did. <laughs> no, I kid Joe. But Hollywood's really to blame for all this violence, right? Well, let's look at Japan home to some of the most violent movies ever. And if you don't believe me, try to find Tokyo Gore Police on Netflix. Japan's got violent movies, violent manga comics, violent anime cartoons, and Takashi Miike's films make natural-born killers look like Tyler Perry's Medea got a show on OWN. They're even showing this. Horrors, Django Unchained. But Japan's got strict gun control laws, which is why in 2006, the entire country had two gun murders. Same video games, same movies, two gun murders for the whole country. So it's got to be the mental illness, right? People are disturbed, kids are over-medicated, that's just in my house. So Wayne LaPierre is calling for a unified national database to keep track of guns. That would violate privacy, so he wants one to keep track of who's being treated for mental illness. But we already have a directory of who's unstable in America, and it's called the phone book. So look at Australia. Mental health organization SANE reports half the population of Australia will experience a mental disorder in their lifetime. In a given year, one in five Aussies have some kind of mental illness, which explains all the Paul Hogan movies. So Australia must be far worse than us with the violence, right? No, because they banned semi-automatic and assault and automatic rifles and shotguns in 96, which led the firearm homicide rate falling by 59% and the suicide rate by guns by 65% in a decade, although they still lead the world in boomerang violence. So it turns out the rest of the world has violent games and films and mentally unstable people. What they don't have is easy access to guns that kill people fast. And ironically, the best argument against giving mentally unstable people guns is Wayne LaPierre. That's Viewpoint for tonight. Thanks to my guests from This Week in Blackness. We'll see you tomorrow.